there you go. And with that, I will be off for a few sections. So it's to Enrico and Simo now. So see you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks. So these small 10 minutes, the link to the materials that you're watching right now is, um, is in the schedule. I will really not go through everything. Basically, we will just go through the pictures to kind of give the basic terms and the basic idea of where you normally are when you do scientific computing and where you want to be when you need to scale up your your resources. So it's always good to start with some XKCD comics. If you're not familiar with them, you know, you can spend a few hours checking <laughs> or, or a few days checking them all. But this is a typical case when you ask someone, you know, what is your is this your machine learning pipeline system? And you know, it's basically just a blob of various stuff. Some data comes inside, something happens, some algebra <laughs> happens, and then you know you get something out. And if it's not good, you mix it a bit. So this joke here is kind of, you know, most of you are doing or will be doing some sort of, you know, computing in the sense that um, you have some data, you need to process the data, extract something meaningful out of the data. And then eventually, if that's your task, you might write a paper about it or publish it or whatever. Yes. So, so yeah, you might, you might take some numbers, turn the, use computers to turn the numbers to different numbers, and then you publish them in a paper and then you get uh, more the citations and that sort of thing. Exactly. So if this is kind of the average process, the point of view that we are taking here is more like, okay, you know, in this process part, what is actually happening? And most likely the the configuration that you have or that you've been having is that you have a laptop or a desktop computer, which is a piece of hardware. And the piece of hardware inside has different parts. So that's the CPUs, which is like, you know, the central processor unit, basically where the math is kind of happening, where the reasoning is happening. But of course, the CPU alone doesn't really do much. The CPU needs to access some data. And so that's the memory where there is the data that is can be accessed fast by the CPU. And then there's the hard disk in your machine where you might have larger, larger files. Of course, you know, having these three things will already be enough. Well, I didn't write the screen. You also need a screen and a, and a keyboard <laughs> to, to interact with this hardware. Human interface devices. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And a chair maybe, because you know mm. you don't want to stand all day. But of course, you might also have a network connection, which brings you to the internet, so that sometimes you can pull, let's say that some of your data is stored in some Google Drive or cloud or whatever cloud system, Dropbox. Then some computers, not all of them, might also have these GPUs which the, the G is stands for graphical processing unit. So they're like many, many, many CPUs packed all together and they can be very efficient for, for, for doing many kind of parallel, parallel things, parallel computations. We don't need to go right now into details. And then on top of that, you have your operating system, the software you've been using, Python, R, MATLAB, whatever. And then yes, the user. So this is what you're very, familiar with and now you have to think that you want to maybe move away or maybe you need to move away from your laptop because your hard disk is not you know uh, big enough to keep all the data or maybe the cloud storage is is so slow to download the data from the google drive because it's so big and your internet connection is not fast you know or maybe the ram you really need lots of memory because you need to keep in in the ram i don't know big matrices so you understand that at some point if the things are scaling, your laptop or your local desktop is not good enough anymore. And this is where we are with this course. And this is the idea here. As I said, I skip all the words. Now you have to understand that there is like a map. This is the map where we will be moving in the next uh, in the next days. So that right now, most likely you're in some you know remote desktop machine or laptop machine connected to the internet, but then you you are not really interested anymore in running the things in your machine in in uh, you know basically your machine is just a keyboard and a screen and an internet connection so that you're able to access you know some remote computational computational resources so this of course also means that um, 
your data, you you don't really look anymore at the data that you have in your local machine. You start maybe moving the data to the big cluster where you might have access, or you know have data in other in other system that are not physically in your in your in your machine, so that you can you know run things basically run processes in uh, in other in other clusters. Now, of course, with great power comes great responsibility, which means that most of the time you logging into one of these clusters to the so-called login node, which is like an entry point. You see the drawing there that is the, the sign that you're not supposed to even stop your car there because the login node is just an entry point to then request what you need. Do you need 20 CPUs? Do you need 200 CPUs? You, you request them, you wait for the request, and then you can start processing all your numbers. It's important to get this idea of you know where the map where you are in the map and we will this will be a theme that will happen in all the in all the in all the lessons that we that we cover here in your experience simo do you is it how can i say is it so familiar to you to immediately know where you are in the various if you're in a single node if you're in the login node if you are in your home is is, is this what you do daily basically yes yes it's completely like natural so so how i often think of it like i i use this analogy once that like uh one if you if you go to a different place like if you go to like a, a summer cabin or something you have rented a summer cabin summer cabin and you go there and you don't if you don't see it the first time then you you figure out where's everything like you first have to figure out where's the where's the sauna and where's where's the lake and that sort of things you have to figure out where the stuff is but if you own a summer cabin every time you go there you, you're not checking where the sauna is and where the lake is because you live there and that's your place and and this is the kind of thing that happens once you start using this system like you become acclimated to the system you become uh you you start to re like feel that you are at somewhere even if you're just using like a like a terminal that we'll be talking about later on uh if you're using just like a um like a client without any graphics you still look and get a feel of where you are and this is very important because that will enable you to like move some of your work like part of your workload to to a system that has something that your laptop doesn't have like Enrico spoke about but in order to make that transition easier it's usually easy to get this kind of like a grasp of where you are where where are you placed so throughout this course it's a good idea to ask uh, ask us and ask yourself okay where am I now like of course you're here in your office, you're here looking, or you're in your home or somewhere, you're looking at the laptop screen, you're here physically, but where you're um, running the code, where where are your, where is your data, where is stuff coming from, where is the cloud, these kind of things. Uh, these, if you get a grasp of these, it will make your life a lot easier. Yeah, and this is very important because some people might have been not, familiar with a system that you actually know what's going under the hood that you actually are super sure that that part of the disk is physically there with you with the data and some other parts are actually in some uh, in some remote system and uh, there are there are devices like ipads or or smartphones you know where, where this is it feels seamless but um, in the background Few, some data is in the actual phone, some data is in the actual cloud. Here, when at this stage, it's actually important to know where you are, to know where your data are and where your process, meaning, you know, the actual computations, are they happening in my laptop, even though the data that I'm pulling is somewhere else in the on the planet, or are they happening there close to the data so that they can be, you know, as fast as and efficient as possible. In general, the final comments, because we are only have two minutes left for this part, is that the use of remote computational resources is also a sustainable way of doing computations for two things. For yourself, because you don't need to keep your laptop open during the night to run whatever machine learning things you need to do. 
you can start your processes, let them, you know, put them in the queue, wait that it's they wait that it's their turn, and then the processes start, they get all the job, and at the end, you know, you check the morning after and everything is done, and you can then just look at the data and write your paper. And another thing, of course, is that if your process is, is over, you know, then someone else will use that specific computational resource. So you don't, you know, if if you leave you your laptop on all night to do something and then it only took one hour it's a bit of a waste of energy you know to leave the laptop on all night of course you know laptops are have some system to save energy and and every every computer has it but the idea here that if there's a big machine that we can all share uh how can i say um equally in a, or in, in in a fair way then uh, it's it's more efficient for 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 everyone and also even one can think it even for the planet <laughs> it's even it's even better. I don't have any other comments. I don't know, Simo, if you want to add something. We basically have one minute <laughs> left. Yeah. But... I'll mention that there was a question in the HackMT about like how much nowadays uh, you need to know about what happens below the surface. And this is a good question and like what sort of hardware things you need to know about. And uh, I would say that we are going to be talking about these things because they relate to what your program is doing. And your program needs to understand these things and your program is basically the thing that that will deal with the hardware eventually so if you know a bit about how your program works and how the uh, what the hardware is it will help you like match them together like basically if you if you know that you need to like i don't know you you bought a big big table from ikea or somewhere and you need to take it home you need to know the size of the the band that you are taking. <laughs> like, can your car fit that table in? And these sort of questions are basically what you need to be thinking about, and we'll be talking about them later. So, so how to match what you want to do with the resources provided by these HPC systems, and and this is something where you need to know a bit about the hardware, but it's not something that you need to like constantly think about. But but it's good to get uh, like a sense of scale also for these kinds of things, and we'll be talking about.